Hey guys, I'm Erwan and I create food and travel documentaries. I'm actually a local from Metro Manila and I realize I've never done a guide to where to eat in Manila. It is always terrifying to do a food guide, especially in the country and the city you were born in. But today I want to show you kind of like the perfect spots to eat if you only have 24 hours to spend in Manila. So this video is not about what to do in Metro Manila, but more so about what to eat and where to eat it. Statistics have shown that most visitors actually stay between 24 to 48 hours in Metro Manila before going off to our beautiful mountain or beach provinces. But before we dig in, first a little note about neighborhoods. This video is brought to you by Smart's new prepaid eSIM. Even if you're not in the country yet, you can get it online in your emails, which is extremely convenient. That way when you land in the Philippines, you have all your internet and data needs covered. Metropolitan Manila or Metro Manila is massive. More than 14 million people officially call it home and it's composed of 16 cities and one municipality. I'm only going to tell you about the ones that visitors should consider staying in. Makati City, known as the Central Business District, is perfect for business or leisure travelers. It's filled with shopping malls, restaurants, hotels, and lots of Airbnbs. The nightlife is vibrant, especially around Poblacion. Quezon City is the largest in Metro Manila. It's a great option for those looking for a mix of residential, art, and commercial areas. The areas are a little spread out and it's quite far from the main airport, so if you're here for a short period of time, I would not consider it. Manila City, the historic heart of the country. Manila is rich in culture and history. Intramuros, the old walled city, takes you back in time. Chinatown and museums aren't far away as well. Traffic can be a challenge here and there isn't much nightlife. Taguig City, or specifically home to Bonifacio Global City, BGC, Taguig is a modern and upscale area. BGC is a financial and lifestyle district with skyscrapers, trendy bars and restaurants, and a lively atmosphere. Pasig City and Mandaluyong are other options you can consider. The hotel rates are slightly lower than Makati and BGC, yet you are not far from both those cities. You will always have malls and tons of eating options, however, a little more spread out. Finally, Pasay City. It's the closest area to the airport, and if you are really limited with time, you could stay here. There are massive malls, casinos, and hotels in this area. My personal opinion is that if you're here for only 36 to 48 hours, as most passengers are, it's to stay in BGC or Makati. You are 30 minutes away from the Naya Airport, have access to the widest array of nightlife, restaurants, shops, and you'll be quite central to reach the other cities in the metro. The Malata area used to be a nightlife and art hotspot. That has since changed and now you can find some great Korean restaurants around here and some hidden gems. Cafe Adratico is a cultural landmark. Open in the late 70s in the style of a Parisian cafe, these walls have seen Manila change around it. Breakfast is an important meal in the Philippines and while you can get sweet options and breads in both local and imported pastry shops, if you want to eat like a local, the Silog is your best bet. So one of the reasons I like to come here is just because it's picturesque, like you feel like you are in an old part of Manila, even though there has been a lot of development around this area, um, it can get quite packed and messy outside, uh, but it's still really beautiful to have kind of like this terrace here, and if you go up to the second floor, it's absolutely gorgeous and inside as well, and it's just kind of like a, a slice of old Manila that I think that if you haven't been to the Philippines or if you don't come here often, is a nice thing to see. Since we're starting off with breakfast, for me, if you're here, you have to watch out for anything that says silog, so it's basically any types of proteins that have um, and are served with uh, garlic rice and then some sort of egg, whether it be scrambled or fried eggs. We will add a full list of all our recommendations plus plus in our website as well in the caption below so that you have kind of like options in terms of where to go to have some of the best sea logs in Manila. I just thought that this was a great place to start simply because they do have a breakfast menu option. I do see usually a lot of cyclists and bikers coming here uh, to eat in the morning and they have the full gamut of the sea logs that you might like to try. Uh, I always like manganisa which is kind of a sausage that we love here from different provinces around the Philippines can be really spicy, can be sweet, can be really briny and salty, really depends what you're into. This is from Bigan, which is a, a beautiful heritage town in Ilocos Sur, and that's usually served with kind of like a relish of 
pickled onions or vinegared onions and tomatoes and then your rice. Mm. The garlic rice is always super key because it helps tame the vinegar that you add to it. Longanisa, that's one of those things, if you eat it now, in a couple of hours, it will still come out when you burp because there's so much garlic in each bite. Very good. Next, we have a beef tapa. So another really common one you'd find. Another one would be pork casino, which is like a sweet and pork. Beef tapa is kind of like a marinated beef with soy. Lots of garlic as well. If you're Filipino and you're watching this, you probably know these things by heart already, but this video also hopefully helps kind of like um, some of our foreigners or tourist friends that come to the Philippines and want to try our food as well. Give that a try. Always that perfect bite of rice, protein, and um, our pickles. Mm. That with our perfectly cooked fried egg. So since we are surrounded by the sea, we have a lot of fish. And one of our favorite ways to cook fish is paksil, which is basically to cook in vinegar. So this might be really strange for some people to eat in the morning, but fish in the morning is a thing here. You can have fish in silog form as well, usually dried fish that's refried and served with the garlic rice and the egg, or you can have it like this, which is paksil, which is stewed in vinegar, ginger, other aromatics. It's probably one of my favorite things to eat. If you're not used to it, do get ready for a very like strong vinegar kind of taste. That's beautifully savory. And that's why you need a lot of rice to go with it. When I was thinking about this video, I actually had to really, really think about it because Metro Manila is such a big city and it's so varied with what you can eat and where you can eat. But the way I was thinking about it was if you don't have much time to spend in Manila and you're using it as a transition point or transit point before going to the islands or other countries in Southeast Asia, you'll probably want to spend most of your time around here in Manila and Old Manila because that's where you see kind of like um, the most culturally significant monuments that we have as well as the museums and places like Intramuros and Chinatown which are great places to visit. So that's why I wanted to focus on breakfast, lunch, dinner places that kind of surround and hover around this area. If you steps away from Cafe Adriatico and through the Manila Koreatown, you'll find one of the most popular and busiest eateries in the metro. Any time of the day, this place will be full. At night, expect lots of smoke and lines out the door. Yeah. This is a place that we've shot multiple times now and it's just because we want to keep coming back because the food here is so good and it's just such great value for money. So it is a couple of steps away from Cafe Adriatico and is a, definitely a more local experience. Um, you come here either in the morning, at lunch, or at night. It's open 24-7. It is always pumping. They're really known for their paras usok, which is, means kind of like smoke. It's a beautiful beef stew slash soup depending on where you get it. Sometimes it's thick, sometimes it's liquid like here. Um, that's usually served with some chives, uh, aromatics that are cooked in like sar anise and stuff, um, and some beautiful rice and some chili in this case, and some egg. Those of you who really love kind of like your street food and stuff, um, this is just a great option. And what I love about this place, it is always so generous with their beef, with their bones, with their bone marrow, with their rice, which explains why they get packed all the time. So when researching food in the Philippines, a lot of you might ex expect what you see in Thailand or Vietnam where there's a lot of kind of like street eateries with outside eating when you don't have kind of like space to sit down and you're standing up. We have that here, but usually in market setups, so not so much on the street. Usually we have eateries where you can kind of go inside um, a shop or a location and sit down and eat inside. But on the outdoors, we have kind of like fish balls and barbecue sticks sometimes. But this is kind of like the stereotypical setup in terms of Southeast Asian street food. And this is why I kind of like coming here because it's kind of wide. Um, you have space to eat and they serve one type of dish, two types, which is the pares with rice or the pares with noodles. And they always do it well and really good each time. So if you want that street food experience in the Philippines, this is a great place to get it. Let's try that bone marrow, look at that. Absolutely full. Good for the heart, good for the soul. 
Should you want to taste some delicacies from the southern island of Mindanao in the Philippines, Manila has a few eateries you can try. Closer to the Manila Mosque, you'll find Junaira Halal Food, and around this area of the city, you'll find Dulang. The food here is very different from what you'll try in the rest of the country, and tourism-wise, Mindanao is still very much under the radar. So trying the food here from these regions can help pique your interests. Aside from the cathedral, the bay, and all the museums in Manila, Intramuros is probably the reason you are here. Manila's historic walled city is a captivating time capsule of Spanish colonial architecture and culture. Enclosed by massive stone walls, it houses landmarks like Fort Chinchago, San Agustin Church, and charming cobblestone streets. Steeped in history, it offers a glimpse into the Philippines' past, showcasing centuries-old churches, dungeons, and one of the few beautifully preserved structures we have left. It also hides one of my favorite coffee shops in the country. The coffee scene in the Philippines is absolutely massive. And there's so many articles and lists online, but I very rarely see Papa Cape on there. But I think it's one of the most beautiful coffee shops in the country. It's probably one of my favorites to come to, even though I don't come to it too often because I don't live too close to here traffic wise. But when you do come here, it is such a special occasion and it's such a special feeling because you're literally in the middle of Fort Santiago, surrounded by history and kind of like these old structures and old stones and it's so peaceful and quiet in such a bustling and busy city and it kind of gives you the perfect, I mean, excuse to come here not only for the good coffee but also to do a tour and kind of learn about uh, our colonial history with, with the Spanish you know, for a couple uh, hundreds of years. Um, and you get good coffee at the same time. So I think if you want to have coffee in the Philippines, I'll put a list of all the really great coffee shops that we have, but this is probably one of the most special for me. This is our Tahot, which is really good. So you've got Tahot is a very popular Filipino street side um, drink snack, I would call it, because it's our Nibal, which is kind of like a deep uh, sugar caramel syrup, which is mixed in with some sort of soybean, tofu, not really tofu, and then some tapioca or sago pearls in there as well. Usually had for breakfast, so this with some oat milk and some coffee is quite nice. Then another really popular Filipino drink is gulaman, which are kind of like these jellies over here. So again, here with some sago and some jelly, with a lot of sweetness, but it's quite nice for people who like sweet drinks. These are chia seeds, not, not sago. Very nice. And then finally, I just got the regular Americano. Great drinks, perfect place to get that mid-morning coffee. Um, they open around 9 a.m. or come here after lunch or right before sunset. It does get quite packed, usually around 3, 4, or 5 p.m. That's when you have the most visitors coming to this area because the heat isn't as aggressive. Um, and you get a beautiful sunset also on the Manila Bay area. If you're really into coffee and snacks, you will be spoiled for choice in Metro Manila. We will add our recommendations in the list in the caption and on our website. Metro Manila is an absolute massive city and if you don't have data while you're going around here and you don't really know the streets quite well, it does get a little confusing. Um, so even if you're just walking or if you're looking for restaurants, I really, really do suggest that you get a data plan so that you can use Google Maps and your favorite apps. And obviously you're traveling, so you wanna take pictures and upload them and send them to your loved ones and friends and family. And so you can watch videos like these as well, as well as book any kind of like last minute plane tickets that you might since the aviation sector here gets quite interesting. Um, so it's really a necessity that I think all of you should have. This video is obviously brought to you by Smart and their prepaid eSIM. What's great about the eSIM is that you can get it online. So if you buy it online and then you register, you'll get a QR code on your email. You scan that and basically you'll have your SIM card ready when you land in the Philippines and then you can load it up with however much pesos you want to use, which is extremely convenient so that you never really lose data connectivity. The other way you can get it is a physical card as well at different kiosks and stuff, but obviously if you're coming from abroad, you're better off doing that registration online. It's actually really simple to do, a couple of clicks and you're done.
So you just have to go on this website here. It explains exactly what an eSIM is. So you basically, you can activate a smart cellular plan without using a physical SIM, which is really great. So the smart prepaid eSIM has the same preload value as regular smart prepaid SIMs with up to 21 gigs of data at a 99 pesos SRP, which is a really good deal. So all you have to do, a couple steps. So the first thing, you wanna add the prepaid eSIM via email to your cart. Next step is enter your mobile number and your email address. And then finally, input the email verification or OTP code. Um, and then you will get uh, the payment screen where you can actually do the payment. And once you've done that, you should get the QR code via email. Once you scan it, you're basically good to go and the eSIM will be installed and you are data ready. Finally, you are ready to activate depending on what phone you are using. Very simple, you scan it, it will open up a mobile plan page. It'll tell you where you want to install the eSIM, whether your phone or your watch, and then eventually your eSIM will be enabled in your SIM card manager. Staying in the area, Cabels is probably your best bet to get a glimpse into traditional and regional Filipino cuisine. It's also quite new, yet has retained lots of old school charm. So in Metro Manila in general, whether you're in Makati, Taguig, um, in Manila, Quezon City, San Juan, any of kind of like the cities within that form Metro Manila, you'll find lots of restaurants that serve kind of like broad Filipino food coming from all the different regions, right? We have 82 provinces, I believe, now in the Philippines, which is quite a lot. And a lot of that regional cuisine is extremely different from one another, but you also have kind of like these base dishes that are ever present in all these provinces. For the longest time in these restaurants, you would find what we call Tagalog cuisine which are things like your adobo or kind of like those really popular dishes that you would see throughout menus in Filipino restaurants, not only here in the country, but throughout the world. But we have three major kind of like areas in the Philippines. We have Luzon, we have the Visayas, and we have Mindanao. And uh, usually Mindanaoan and Visayan food isn't as well represented nationwide. So we would always kind of have these repeat Tagalog dishes in most restaurants, um, most Filipino restaurants in Metro Manila. Why I like Kame in Cabel is that they have dishes from all of those three islands and really represent kind of like the whole Philippine map and the whole Philippine culinary map, which I think is really important because it showcases the diversity of our culture. It showcases our history through our eras of colonization and, and trade and ultimately gives you a better picture and a more general idea of the country and kind of like the opportunity that we have in terms of food and the flavors that we have. So I ordered some of my favorites, but I've already had kind of like some of their tau soup dishes here, like their chula tum, which is a really nice um, blackened coconut beef soup. Um, that's usually uh, had in areas around um, the Sulu Sea. I ordered that last time, but this time I'm going with a classic torta de long with some banana ketchup. I have some ukoi here. I have some beef coma. This is again, from the southern region of Mindanao, which is our version of a beef curry. And then obviously I have an adobo, which you should always try wherever you are in the country because the adobos are always different, which is always really fun to figure out which is your favorite. Tortang talong first. And little touches like the rice have some bubuk on it, which is a tausug spice from Sulu. And it's nice to see that being integrated. Hmm. Let's try the beef coma with some potatoes here. Mm. See, these are the spices usually you would not kind of like encounter in your day-to-day -day Filipino food. But it's just so lovely seeing it and tasting it. What more? In terms of locations, you're right next to Malacanian Palace, which is where the president works or lives. I think works and lives. So that's where they work and live. Um, so you're not too far from the old Manila area, you're not too far from Chinatown, the Binonda area. And you're in a heritage house, which is absolutely gorgeous, so it kind of shows you the architecture of the time when Manila was called the Pearl of the Orient. So again, depending where you are in the Philippines, basic ingredient here, the most prominent ingredient should be vinegar. And then after that, it's kind of like up to the cook and up to the province where you're eating it. What kind of proteins you use, what kind of spices are used, Sometimes soy is used, sometimes it isn't. Sometimes a chuete or an anato seeds are used, sometimes they aren't. Sometimes coconut milk is used, sometimes it isn't. So this is a more kind of like garlicky version, which is quite nice. Finally, our ukoi. 
So again, depending on the province where you have this, it's kind of like a Japanese, you know, the Japanese have the like kakiyage, which is kind of like a mixed vegetable style tempura that's mixed with lots of different vegetables. Here, depending on where you are, you'll have pumpkin, you'll have sweet potatoes. Sometimes it's clumpy like a fish cake. Sometimes it's really airy and crispy. I like this one because it's kind of like airy. Mm. That's usually mixed in with like a cornstarch or a flour stirry. And then shrimp. You can have some versions without shrimp as well. Always with a nice vinegar dip. If you aren't pressed for time and want to brave the crowds, heading over to Benondo or the oldest Chinatown in the world is an experience. The Filipino Chinese community is huge and truly embedded in our local culture. So you'll find some amazing dishes that have since been localized and embraced. If you listen to my recommendations, I told you to stay either in Makati and Tagig. And the reason behind that is because all your creature comforts are around those areas. And if you do want to experience kind of a more cosmopolitan side of Metro Manila, which I think has its merits in its own in terms of really good restaurants and really good coffee shops, higher end eateries, if that's your thing, at least being in a central area like Makati and Tagig, where you're not too far from the airport either, it's just a good place to base yourself up. So if you spent your whole day in Manila and you decided or not to pass by Chinatown in Binondo to have some snacks, then you're gonna come through back into Makati and this is probably the area you're gonna come through in. And one of my favorite chicken and asal places is actually here. We went here, I think, five years ago. That was the last time their name changed and their branding changed a little bit, but the food is just as good. In asal is my favorite grilled chicken dish from the whole country. If you come to the Philippines, barbecue is a big, big thing. And this is my favorite type of Filipino barbecue that comes from the areas of like Bacolod and Iloilo, where they do a lot of beautiful um, in a sal dishes. Marinated chicken, usually with some soy, some acid in forms like calamansi or batuan sometimes even, and lots of different aromatics, always served with beautiful chicken oil. You wanna put a lot of that. Then sauce culture in the Philippines and dipping culture is very, very key. Crush those red peppers, depending on how spicy you want this to be. You go ahead and press in your calamansi juice. To that, we add some soy sauce. If you wanna add some chili cinnamon or some vinegar with some spices in it, feel free to do so as well. Extra garlic over here, some salt on the side, which is a nice touch, which I quite like. Let's try this out. Let's try it without anything first. Mm, still as good as I remember it. Honestly, in Metro Manila, for me, this is the best in the South. You can find some delicious ones in Iloilo or in Negros Island. But if you're not gonna go visit these areas, this is one of those restaurants I highly recommend. The rice is perfectly cooked. I love the crunchy garlic. Chicken oil is basically rendered chicken fat with an atto and flavoring, and it makes any bowl of rice absolutely perfect. If you want to be extremely cheeky, you can add chicken oil to your chicken. Mm. So at night, a couple of other neighborhoods you can check out is the area of Poblacion or Salcedo or Legazpi Village or even downtown BGC. Lots of cosmopolitan stuff happening there, lots of good energy. If you want something a bit fringe, a bit different, you can go all the way up to Cubao X, but depending on what time you go, the traffic can be really bad if you are staying in these areas. Um, and I will put a full list of recommendations in and around these cities that you can check out of some really tried and tested restaurants and bars that are really good. And hopefully that list helps you out with your next trip to Manila. So again, remember to get that smart prepaid eSIM and just enjoy the Philippines. And I hope you really, really leave with amazing memories, great experiences, and amazing bites of food.